Hello guys, this is Adit. Welcome to my channel Movement Science, where I simplify biomechanics with Job. So if you are new to this channel, consider subscribing. Also check me out on Instagram, where I post pictures of my notes and also put out some daily MCQs. The reference time for all the topics that I'm going to cover will be mentioned down in the description. So check that out and let's get started. In this video, I will be talking about the intervertebral disc. Okay, so this is the disc which is present between the two vertebras. And I know this looks like a lot of information, but I'll break it down and I'll make it as simple as possible. You'll have to remember like two, three points under each uh, sub component of the disc and that will be it. Okay. And then we'll cover the nutrition and innovation of the disc and we'll finish up the topic. It's going to be a very short video. So let's get started. So first we'll start with the nucleus pulposus over here. Then we'll move on to the outer part that is called as the annulus fibrosis. And then the top and the bottom, there's like a covering, which is called as the end plate. Okay. So these are the three components of the disc. So this is your disc. There is a nucleus pulposus over here and around it is the annulus fibrosis, right? Okay. And then top and bottom, there will be the end plates. So this I made just so that you guys could get familiar with the structure of the disc, right? So this is how the disc will be sandwiched between the two vertebras in help in shock absorption right so let's start with the nucleus pulposus it is a gelatinous material so it has lot of water in it okay this is the main characteristics of your nucleus pulposus that it has 70 to 90 percent of water and this varies with age and time when you are younger there is more water and also with time that is early morning when you wake up your nucleus pulposus retains lot of water compared to later in the day and this makes it this water makes makes your disc also bulge and this also increases your height when you get up early in the morning so if you check your height early in the morning it will be much more than later at the night okay so that is something which is very interesting that the nucleus pulposus it holds water and can increase your height in the early mornings right then going to the next part is 65% of it is proteoglycans. Now this is the second important part under nucleus pulposus. That is the proteoglycans. Why? Because it holds water. So it's again related over here to water, right? So proteoglycans also called as a PG has ability to retain water. And this is a key factor for shock absorption present in the disc, right? So going ahead is the collagen that is 15 to 20 percent of collagen and some other things that are found in the disc are proteolytic enzymes chondrocytes elastin fiber and also proteins now these are less significant but you can just keep them in mind so over here another part is collagen okay so there are two types of collagen there is type 1 and type 2 now nucleus pulposus has more of type 2 collagen and this type of collagen helps in resisting compressive forces okay compressive forces are resisted by type 2 collagen whereas type 1 collagen prevents distractive forces okay this is a very important thing to remember that type 2 resists compressive forces and type 1 resists distractive forces now since i said it uh, helps in resisting compressive forces let us see how so if you see this diagram the force is coming from top and the nucleus pulposus which is there when the force is exerted on it it will produce a force out in outward direction in all the directions right so compressive loading the pressure is exerted in all the direction by your nucleus pulposus and what will happen the force of equal magnitude but opposite in direction will be exerted by your annulus the annulus is the side part which we will see in a while okay that is uh, that exerts force back on the nucleus pulposus and an equilibrium is maintained over here which helps in absorbing the forces right so this is how the mechanism of disc works that is in it helps in absorbing the compressive forces with balance of both outward and inward force uh, creating an equilibrium right so we'll see how annulus fibrosis can put a force back into the nucleus pulposus in a while so let's go on to the annulus fibrosis now annulus fibrosis has 60 to 70 percent of the water if you compare to nucleus pulposus it's less right 
and because water is less obviously proteoglycans will be less because if there was more proteoglycans it would have held more water in the annulus right but since proteoglycans are less water is also less so that is something you can easily remember then there is elastin 10 percent fibroblast and chondroblast not that significant to remember and then the main part is the collagen again over here over here there is 50 to 60 percent of collagen and over here the type of collagen is type 1 which helps in resisting tensile forces tensile or distractive forces it helps in resisting okay so if you see nucleus pulposus and annulus fibrosis are kind of opposite this has more water this has less water proteoglycans are high low and type 2 collagen whereas over here it's type 1 collagen which helps in providing resistance to tensile forces right and the last point over here is it is covered superiorly in and inferiorly by your end plate so if you see this is the annulus fibrosis the pink part and it is covered superiorly and inferiorly by your end plate so we'll move on to the end plate next but just to draw your attention that the nucleus pulposus was producing outward force right when compressive force was coming on it and this was resisted by annulus fibrosis due to the type 1 collagen fibers because it resists tensile force right so something you can keep in mind that there is balance of type 1 and type 2 which help you in creating that equilibrium and absorbing the forces nicely right so till now we have covered nucleus pulposus which is more of on the water side then annulus fibrosis which is more on the non-water side now let us go on to the end plate now this i would call it is more on the cartilage side so it is very similar to your cartilage so basically it is a layer of cartilage and it is on the superior and inferior surface okay superior and inferior surface as you have seen and it is 0 0.6 to 1 mm thick okay it is basically present between your bone and the disc right but it is also considered as a part of disc itself now it has proteoglycans collagen and water which is not that significant over here what is significant is is it has cartilage cells and there are two types of cartilage cell there is hyaline cartilage cell and there is the fibrocartilage now hyaline cartilage it will get converted eventually to fibrocartilage with age okay because fibrocartilage is a structure which is very helpful in absorbing forces so as your age increases your force absorption strategies need to be increased right because your weight is also increasing your height is also increasing so this is done by your fibrocartilage which just got converted from the hyaline cartilage with age okay hyaline cartilage is present more near the vertebras whereas the fibrocartilage is present more near the nucleus okay so hyaline cartilage will be somewhere over here whereas if you come down it will be more of a fibrocartilage structure this fibrocartilage helps in taking up the load okay that's why with age these hyaline get converted into fibrocartilage so with that we finish the end plate part so till now what did we see nucleus pulposus is watery non-watery this is type 2 this is type 1 and over here it's basically cartilage and fibrocartilage which helps in absorption of forces now going to the next part is the innervation your outer one third to half of your annulus fibrosis has branches of vertebral and sinovertebral nerves these also innervate your ligaments so your disc and the ligaments around it are innervated by your vertebral and sinovertebral nerves okay whereas nutrition if you see the nutrition it gets through diffusion which we will talk in a while but apart from diffusion there are metaphyseal arteries from the dense capillary plexus in the base of the end plate of the cartilage and subchondral bone now subchondral is just below the cartilage right so if this is your bone and bone has a cartilage on top right so just below the cartilage the bone has a very rich blood supply and your disc gets the blood supply through the metaphyseal arteries okay and once it gets the blood supply through compression and diffusion this nutrients are spread all around the disc and through diffusion also it gets its nutrition so with that we finish up the topic now let's summarize we saw nucleus pulposus has high proteoglycans which allows it to hold high water and also takes up compressive forces because of the type 2 collagen okay this is the only thing you need to remember under this then annulus fibrosis it has low proteoglycans because of which it has low water and it is high in type 1 collagen which helps it in taking up the tensile forces 
Then we went to end plate, which is more of a layer of cartilage, and it has two types: the hyaline and fibrocartilage. Hyaline converts into fibrocartilage with age because fibrocartilage helps in taking up the load, right? Then we saw the innervation. It is innervated by the vertebral and sinovertebral arteries, and the nutrition it gets through metaphyseal arteries and also by diffusion. So with that, we finish off this topic. That's all for today, guys. Thank you for watching. If you like my video, please share it with your friends. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and also like the video as it really helps me out. Also, let me know in the comment section what other videos you would like me to cover. And see you soon in the next video.